So, since my video yesterday, we have gotten another move to the upside. We've taken out this high up here. And I was feeling really bullish yesterday, and so far I am still feeling relatively bullish. But there are some things that could happen in the next few days that could change that. So, I want to go over um, pretty much both scenarios, the bullish scenario and the bearish scenario. I think it mainly comes down to where we close the next weekly candle tomorrow. Uh, today is Saturday. The weekly candle closes on Sunday night. So we got about a day and a half until the weekly candle closes. And the reason I think the weekly close is going to be so significant is because if we close a weekly candle down below this uh, high now, this previous high up here, it would technically be an SFP of a weekly market structure point of the weekly uh, higher high. Because so far the weekly structure looks like this. We had this weekly uh, lower high, lower low, and then we broke market structure right here with this candle when we finally closed up above this high. And yeah, from there we have just put in the higher high up here. And if we close a weekly candle up above this high now, then the weekly higher low would be right here. So right now we have wicked the weekly higher high and this is something that has happened before in fact we did it back here when we wicked this high and this is why you know i didn't say we broke structure until right here because this is when we actually closed up above the high but we did wick it right before and that wick uh the i guess sfp of the weekly market structure point did lead to a pretty significant move to the downside before we finally broke structure. So could that happen again? I think it's possible. Maybe we just end up wicking the weekly high, getting another move to the downside and potentially looking to uh, break the weekly structure or continue the weekly structure, I should say, later. Look to, you know, maybe get another move to the upside later. And potentially we could even get a move down to break daily structure, which is what happened back here. If I go to the daily time frame, uh, this is when we had that daily market structure break that, uh, you know, for sure threw me off. Um, once we got the daily market structure break, I was, you know, assuming we would probably put in a lower high and then a lower low. That's not what happened. We just put in a daily lower low and then got a pump up to put in a daily higher high. Basically a fake out of market structure on the daily and potentially that could happen again right now the daily market structure looks like this this is the you know last daily lower low and since we put that in we have then just come up to break structure so you know we could get a move down kind of break daily structure again throw people off um, get people bearish again just to you know maybe come up and continue weekly market structure later and i think that a good sign that this scenario might be happening, or at least a scenario where we get a large retracement after waking the weekly high before you know doing whatever we're gonna do, maybe starting a downtrend, maybe uh, continuing up later on. But uh, I think a good sign that this pump um, is over would be if we broke four hour structure here. And we have put in a four hour higher low and higher high, making a four hour market structure break you know, relatively easy. Um, right now we've probably already retraced about 50% of this move and it seems like we are continuing to dump here. So yeah, if we come down to break this four hour high or low, that may be a sign that a larger retracement is coming and you know, who knows where we're going to kind of bottom out. We could just do something like this, break four hour structure back bullish and just put in a daily high or low, continue the daily uptrend. That's a possibility as well. But I think the first um, sign that I would look for that this move to the upside is, you know, really over and that we're going to start a retracement would be this four hour market structure. But we could also just put in a four hour higher low here and then get another pump to the upside. And then, you know, if we close a weekly candle up here, then I would not be considering the bearish scenario much anymore. You know, if we continue this weekly market structure, if we continue this weekly uptrend, then I really wouldn't be super bearish again until we lose the weekly high or low, which would be right here. So I think a lot of it comes down to where we close this weekly candle. So I know that was kind of all over the place, but that is essentially what I'm looking at. If we break four hour structure, then I'll get more bearish. If we close a weekly candle down below this 
uh, high that we just took out. I will get more bearish. Um, I don't think that you know necessarily means we're gonna you know go on a full retracement here. I guess we could break four-hour market structure, close a weekly candle down below this high, and you know like I said, maybe just look to pump up soon. Like put in a low, put in a daily high or low, switch uh, four-hour market structure back to bullish, and then just continue on our way, kind of get a fake out. That is possible too, but. Overall, I'm looking at the weekly close. I'm looking at the four hour market structure and we do have some potentially bearish signs here as we took out this high. Uh, if you look on the daily time frame, right now we haven't printed a red dot on this momentum wave, but we do have a divergence forming. This momentum wave is clearly lower than this one. Even the money flow is lower than it was when we put in uh, this wave, when we put in this high and price has put in a higher high. So we have a divergence potentially with momentum and money flow on the daily. And we have divergences on some other time frames as well. On this four hour, we uh, got a pretty clear momentum dip there, not money flow. But I think if we go down to the one hour, we did get a money flow divergence. So if we start confirming these divs on the daily, if we're not able to get another push to the upside to push money flow and momentum up, and if we start breaking four hour structure here, that would kind of add to my bearishness. But again, this could change if we put in a four hour higher low and continue to the upside. This could bring momentum and money flow to the upside. Now, in the meantime, I am again, you know, as I always do, just going to be trading the local price action. And I'm still in both of my longs from down here. I took out uh, some good profits up here, left some on the table because we were closing you know, some high time frame candles up above this high. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that we would close a daily candle up here, but we didn't. We kind of wicked it on the daily. So I did take out enough profits up there, but um, I could have taken more. And, you know, at this point, I probably could have re-added to my positions because we've retraced a good bit here. But overall, you know, if I get stopped out, I'm cool with my profits. And I am just going to be trading the local price action, trading this as a range as I always do, and potentially looking to get into some shorts around the highs of this range if a opportunity is presented because at this point we do see some bearish signs. Um, there is the potential that the bearish scenario plays out and uh, you know we are potentially at a very significant top up here. So um, you know a short from here could potentially turn into a swing trade. So I can quickly run through and make some short ideas. And we do have a one hour order block right here. Let me see if there is a higher time frame one. Check the two hour, nothing there. So it looks like the one hour is the highest um, time frame order block up here. We can see if there's any smaller ones inside of it. The 30 minutes is about the same. We could look at this 15 minute as well, kind of covering the top half of this one hour order block. Um, so, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that marked out. And now I would check volume from the high. So pulling it from high to, uh, we'll pull it to the low. And the value area high is inside this one hour order block. So that is some decent confluence there. I'll pull a fib as well. And the golden pocket is lining up right with that value area high. So I'm liking the confluence there. We could also kind of grab liquidity from these highs and maybe even go over to Coinalize, see if a lot of people shorted over there. It does look like some positions opened up right here, some long, some short, but overall, CVD kind of got this trend to the downside. Um, so some longs opened up here, but it looks like some shorts opened up over here. Potentially their stop losses are still remaining up above that high. If we either kind of wick this high, get to move up into that golden pocket and get a quick reaction, or if we get to move up into this area with some low time frame market structure, then we uh, break market structure. Those would be the two things I would really be watching for in this area. And to the downside, we still have this one hour order block that we did not hit yet. Looks like we hit this two hour one. So we kind of already uh, started hitting into the order blocks to the downside, but this one hour is still remaining right below it. And we do have confluence with the point of control uh, not really the value area low, but the POC of this uh, previous range is right in there. And we can do the same thing. We can pull a fib from the low. And I don't love that golden pocket placement. We already hit the GP. 
So, you know, the 786 is at the bottom of the order block. So we got the POC right here. And this 30 minute, wait, is that an order block or did we tag that? We kind of kind of tagged that with that second candle after it printed. So I don't love that. Um, this, well, no, same thing with this 15 minute. We tagged this one as well. It looks like with this candle. So I would just in general be looking at this one hour order block. We do also still have this five minute order block down below the previous range. So, you know, we could still wick into that and put in a four hour higher low. So since it's above the four hour market structure point, I would still be paying attention to this as well. And there's a wick here. So those are pretty much my local ideas. Um, I like this level to the upside, although right now it doesn't seem like it would agree with market structure. Um, did we get a low time frame market structure shift here? Uh, yeah, looking at three minute structure, we did get a higher low, higher high here, and broke structure right here. So because of that, I think the three minute higher or lower high would be right here or right here. It looks like we put in equal highs maybe. I don't know. Either way, it's right around here, and then we put in a lower low. And... Actually, it looks like we would switch three minute structure back to bullish here if we close above this high. Although this isn't the best structure, uh, since we're looking at low time frame structure, you could probably count that. So, my point is that that short idea wouldn't really agree with market structure, but it still could work. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I would be willing to take a short scalp if we see confirmations up here. And to the downside, the long ideas could agree with market structure, could agree with high time frame market structure because it could make a four hour higher low. So yeah, those are things to consider. But overall, these are my levels that I'm gonna be watching. And basically I'm gonna be waiting for one of those high time frame developments to happen. All right, well, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you all in the next one.